first step in this process of making pasticho is to boil one pound of pasticho noodles for 10 to 13 minutes. Now I'm going to uh, start cooking the onions. I have one onion chopped and I'm cooking it in a three tea tablespoons of uh, olive oil. And once they're done, we'll add the ground beef to that. So I like to grind my own. Uh, I like to grind my own beef. I'm using um, chuck here, so I'm going to have uh, very nice ground chuck when I'm finished grinding. So I'm just finishing up grinding the meat. This is the last of it coming out. And we have a nice ground chuck, about one and a half pounds uh, for a, a um, 11 by 13 inch pen. So now the onions are translucent. I'm going to add the ground beef. Might need to get a bigger pan. Probably, uh, I think I can manage in this pan. So we want to cook this until the beef is nice and brown and caramelized, uh, as well as the onions, and then we'll add our spices. As you can see, our ground beef is progressing to a uh, nice. Uh, brown color. A few more minutes and it will be ready to uh, drain. And then once we drain it, we'll add our spices. So the meat is ready to be drained. I'm just going to pour it in here. Make sure we get rid of all the, the uh, grease. And I like to kind of move it around. Make sure all the grease drains out. Now that the meat is drained, I'm going to add about four ounces of tomato paste. This is a six ounce can, so I'm just taking about four ounces of it. And here I have two teaspoons of cinnamon and one, about three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cloves. And I'm going to add that to the mixture. I'm also going to add a little bit of water to thin it out a little bit and that was maybe, I don't know, a third of a cup of water, not even that, not even a quarter cup of water and just stir this up, may need to add a little more water. And I will uh, show you the finished product when it. I am going to add now a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And I'm going to mix that up and, and set it aside for now. So now we're going to make the bechamel sauce. So I'm going to take six tablespoons of butter and we're going to melt that. Okay, now the butter is melted, so we can add to that six tablespoons of flour. 
basically we're making a roux here which will thicken our milk to the consistency that we want it. You want to let the roux cook a little bit so the flour, the flavor of the flour uh, kind of goes away. I've, I've got my uh, stove top at about uh, four level four and we'll let this cook for just a little bit we don't want it to get brown otherwise our sauce will be our bechamel sauce will be too too dark okay so now we're ready for the warm milk so to this roux, to this mixture of butter and flour, I'm going to add three and a third cups of warm milk. begin thickening right away because the milk was already warm uh, but in order for a roux to work properly it, it the product actually needs to come to a slight boil as you can see it's beginning to boil so I can turn the, the heat down to low So we've let the bechamel sauce cool down a little bit and the reason you want to do that is because you don't want the eggs to cook when you pour them in. So I have three eggs scrambled here and I'm going to slowly add those to the, my bechamel sauce and you need to keep stirring vigorously so the eggs do not cook. That's a really nice color, nice yellow hue. And lastly to this, we're going to add four ounces of, of Parmesan cheese. So that's about, that's about two to three ounces there. I have more that I'll add. Just a second. Get that mixed in. I'm getting more Parmesan cheese here. And I'm just going to eyeball this. That's about four ounces total. Or about a half a cup. And to this. To all my bechamel sauces, I always add ground nutmeg. Gives it a little uh, enhanced flavor. Not a whole lot, just enough to add a little flavor. And next we will assemble. So to the bechamel sauce, uh, I did add a little salt and, and white pepper. Uh, along with the uh, nutmeg, and now I'm melting about four ounce of uh, four uh, tablespoons of butter, and I'm going to add this to my pasta right here, so that it's easier to work with. It won't stick, and what have you. Plus your pasta is going to kind of line the bottom of your pan and you want it to be uh, a little buttery so it's the same as, uh, as you know, buttering your pan or sp spraying your pan on the bottom. Uh, this way the, the pasta is already coated and there's no need to do that. 
Okay, now we are ready to assemble. Okay, I'm going to begin assembling the pasticho by taking my noodles and lining the bottom of my pan. You want to get enough noodles in there to kind of cover the bottom of the pan. So probably close to half the noodles and the other half you'll use on top. Probably won't need the, the entire pound. And then at this stage you want to sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top. Sometimes I also like to put a little bechamel sauce on the bottom. it down into the crevices of the pasta below. Basically, it's a it's a Greek lasagna. It's made kind of the same way a lasagna is, as far as layering goes. There we go. One more in this corner here. And so this is what the pasticho should look like after it's baked, um, nicely browned on top. It would have been a little better if I had a little more bechamel sauce, but other than that, it turned out pretty good. Thanks for watching. This pasticho is a recipe from my grandmother, passed on to my mother, and then on to me.